here we are. So let's let's talk about math. Let's get into the theory that's of of cicadas and and sure. their rhythms and prime numbers. It's uh, it's great. I, I actually I wasn't doing cicada research. I was just reading a book about um, geometry and came across this fun little tidbit. Well, we've got uh, two life cycles, 13 year and 17 year. They're both prime numbers. The leading hypothesis right now, if you look at, at the, how they originate, if you look at the distribution of the two life cycles, the 17 year cicadas are north, 13 year cicadas are south. And uh, we know from some wonderful work uh, uh, by Teji Soto et al., uh, we now have some more molecular data on their evolution. The common ancestor of the genus Magis cicada, uh, 3.9 million years ago, diverged into one large species and one small species. The small species then diverged two and a half million years ago into two small species. That gives you our three species groups. When I talk about species groups, both the 13 and the 17 year skaters, there's a septendecim for 17 years and tridecim for 13 years. Their calls are very similar. They look very similar, although the tridecim has a slightly different coloration on the uh, underside of the abdomen. Then there's neotridecim, which looks just like septendecim, and the calls are very similar, but they're all three about the same length and size. But so we call all three of those the decim because their calls so similar and their patterns tend to be and they'll be alike. So that's a little background. We have the same same thing going on with the other two species. There are uh, a 17 to 13 year form, which calls very similar. Uh, it, the leading hypothesis is that the periodical cicadas evolved from a th that evolved their 13 year life cycle first. It evolved in the refugia south uh, south of the ice sheets during the glaciation. Mm. And uh, uh, and and part, one of the ideas is that the longer life cycle evolved in response to this very hazardous time period. And it looks like they've got genetic switches that can trigger four years of development. 13 and, four, mm. and 17 are, are four years apart. But they sometimes, I've got 13 year skaters that came out after nine years. And we've got 17 year skaters that came after 21 years. Some 17 year skaters will come out four years early than 13 years. That there's a genetic switch that can trigger four years. Which, by the way, there's your eight and four. Huh. And so mm. the the mathematical model would be n times four plus one for periodic for the northern periodical cicadas. The others would be just n times four. Uh, Interesting. So now, as the I, now, of course, what really gets us squirrely is you've got the 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 retreat of the glaciers four times during the last three and a half million years. So we've got uh, what happened most recently, uh, not more than twenty miles north where I'm sitting right now, it was the extent of the last ice age it was just in so just north of cincinnati by that was twenty thousand years ago by fourteen thousand years ago it had retreated up to north of toledo as it retreated the forest came in and moved slowly northward and the cicadas came with it and so the thought is that if you can switch these life cycles by this four years those is it warm enough to come out in 13 years no it might be too cold you're a little close to the ice sheet you hold on and try another four another four years later which in four years how much did it retreat was that enough to be more? And so that's that might be what that's been suggested, the trigger between the 13 and 17 year groups. But we do know there's a lot, there's some fluidity. Uh, Brood 10 here came out four years ago in massive numbers. And uh, when uh, Brood 10 comes, uh, those that come out after 21 years, it's going to be inside at the same time as Brood 14. And we can't tell them apart. They don't wear little numbers on their back. So it's kind of rough. They don't wear numbers on their back. How did you identify it in the beginning then that you said you were able to tell genetically that even though it came out four years later, how did you know it was brood 10 and not brood, the, the, the brood four years later? There, are, It depends on if you've got an uh, area where brood 10 occurs and no other cicadas occur in that area. Oh, okay. And it comes out in an area where nowhere else, this for example, Eastern Ohio is predominantly brood five. And so when brood five came out, had an acceleration uh, the last go around and came out during brood one, there are no, no brood one cicadas known in eastern that eastern half of Ohio. So the only population that come from is five. Mm -hmm. And so back to their evolution, uh, two and a half million years ago, now you got three species. In the last 300,000 years is when the broods evolved. And, uh, and in some cases, the broods might have evolved just in the last 25, 30,000 years. So it's you know, they're almost instantaneous evolutionarily speaking that's not you know 20,000 years is, is nothing for their evolution so that's the and so when you bring in the, this geological model it really helps you know you, you look at where the cicadas are in Ohio compared to where brood 10 let's say is in Pennsylvania and you can see the influence of where the ice sheets were how far did they go south and mm. uh, now they're responding uh, to uh, 
to life in this inner war, this inner warming period uh, between the, uh, the the ice ages. And uh, we know that, uh, for example, here in uh, Ohio, brood 14 is adjacent to brood 10. 14 is getting smaller over the last 200 years. 10 is getting bigger. They're accelerating slowly to come out four years early. Now we have instances now in Southwest Ohio with uh, we've actually observed in the last 34 years where brood 10 cicadas came out four years out of schedule. They all didn't get eaten. And to the year 2000, five locations had enough cicadas that sang, mated, and reproduced. 13 years later, a few hundred came out. They all got eaten. 17 years after the year 2000, they came out in massive numbers again, joined by more accelerating cicadas. And we now have 33 locations in Southwest Ohio where they're singing, mating, and reproducing. We've actually seen the origin of a new population of brood six cicadas. And so uh, it's what's sort of neat now that there's so much interest in periodical cicadas and uh, we've got the news media helping us and we've got things like the apps or whatever. We are now seeing these secrets that the cicadas have held on. Uh, these, it, 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 it makes sense when you see oh, there's two life cycles or four years apart. You see these patterns out the eastern uh, U.S. brood nines adjacent to five, adjacent to one. Uh, you know, there's, something, there's something that's consistent going on here. Now that we've seen the formation of a new population in southwest Ohio, uh, it's clear these these accelerations. And then why would they why would that be beneficial? Did I anticipate your question, Barrett? Yeah. So you've you've basically you've suggested the origin possible origin of the trait. Now let's talk about maintenance of the trait, if indeed it is. The maintenance. Uh, Monty Lloyd, the great cicada worker who from the University of Chicago had a hypothesis and he and I did some experiments on it. We didn't get to complete it before he passed away. Uh, but we found anecdotal evidence to suggest this is the case. When you come out four years early, you may get out of sync with the fungus. And so old established popular broods get may have higher incidences of fungus if they if some of those people some of those some of those cicadas i think of as people some of those cicadas shift uh they can get lower infection rates well that's the next thing we need to study on that uh on on that and can i add that apparently now i have to talk to my co- my mycologist colleagues those who study fungi but apparently that single fungus is the longest lived fungus lasting the 17 years necessary to wait out the next opportunistically arrival or emergence of say brood 10. So this is yep. an amazing thing is, is this long duration out of the picture and a prime number, the key ingredients to, uh, to preventing predators or parasites from say, um, matching your life cycles. Yeah, one of the suggestions, we always thought that it was too long, that there's no intermediate steps that a predator or a parasite could evolve to match, to, to live sustained by periodical cicadas. That, turn that around. If this is such a, if, Hold if on this one is second, a, just because, just because, Joseph, what are you, what are you trying to show us here? Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, this is the Mosospora fungus, and you could see that the yellow fungus has eaten, the yellow white substance has eaten the bottom of this cicada Mm. and it still is very very much alive until who knows how long um and it just loses its entire body like it continues to lose its body mass and just continues to try to mate thereby continuing to spread the fungus and it has compounds similar to psilocybin and amphetamines which kind of help it to continue on um <laughs> so oh, it's yeah. tri- it's tripping and on speed <laughs> yes. essentially <laughs> what a way to go wow. <laughs> after 17 Amazing. years of being underground you have your first vision <laughs> as an adult and then shabang <laughs> i mean even adventurous humans usually don't mix psychedelics <laughs> and speed yeah no it's so far out what's what what the the correlation between this fungus and with the um and with the cicadas i mean what what a what a marvel in nature really yeah although the when what's what's the fungus the the, the relation with the 17 and 13 years and why the, the the prime number may not be important is that if this is such a way to get out of sync with all your specialized predators why it's only why is it only the periodical cicadas that are doing it and so that's yeah. some of the that's some of the discussion on the other side of the coin. Uh, I, 
I think that brings up Shane's point earlier that they're aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, there are a few things out there that that are a specialty in a species that just nothing else has stumbled upon ever. And and what a long time to wait. I mean, there's there's a there's a cost involved there of waiting that long of things happening and as you're dormant the ice sheets or whatever else wiping you out right that's that's a tremendous cost to be to be um dormant for Instead, well, for well, they're 13, not, they're not, 17 they're years they're not dormant Shane to be to be clear they're eating down there okay and, and the idea that they're in diapause is, is or hibernating is incorrect oh and they're, I see. And, and they're, Thank you. they're actually quite active but working with a very slow metabolism because they're eating the xylem, which has like very little nutritional value, mm -hmm. which allows them to like just slow live this 17 year time period. But I'd love to know if either Barrett or Gene, what do we know about their lives underground for this whole period of time besides sucking on plant xylem? Can I? Well, uh, you go for it, Barrett. Well, I, I, I just wanted to go back to the idea that if you're, Somehow you must be, going, touching on Shane's point, conferring some fitness benefits with these long durations underground because what is the alternative? The alternative is to have shorter or faster generation times, faster turnovers, so that the, by a numbers game, other species of cicadas may be deemed more successful on some metric. So the prime number, I feel like, except for these eight and four years that you're mentioning, may play a role for what we haven't mentioned, and that is this idea, the second potentially competing hypothesis, maybe non-mutually exclusive hypothesis, that it at least limits the amount of potential hybridization that would occur with a periodical cicada and another cicada, where you might potentially mm -hmm reproduce and those, those offspring would not carry the beneficial traits of the periodical cicada. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Because hmm. um, you would have to match, even if say you're a cicada that um, uh, has a three year life cycle, you're not going to hit that 13 years or 17 years and you're going to limit not only predators and parasites, but potentially hybridization potential with immatures in the other life cycles. Of course, with the annual cicadas and the periodical cicadas, the periodical cicadas come out earlier than the annual cicadas. So you'd also have to shift when they come out in the year for them to hybridize. Oh. It's like the, the, the cicada clerk wasp uh, comes out with the annual cicadas. And there, mm. I'm sure there have been instances in the past where some Johnny completely cicada came out, you know, was still around, let's say, July the 5th to the 10th, and a cicada killer wasp got it. But it's relatively rare, uh, actually quite rare, because uh, right now there's no cicada killer wasps out yet, but the cicadas are real, the, brood, the, the periodical cicadas are dwindling rapidly. Have you seen the picture of the annual and periodical together this year? Because of the cold snaps that we've had, yeah. They, and right now, they they start they start emerging early. Uh, uh, we had some come out about three four weeks ago in the southern states, in particular in Georgia. And uh, we uh, are right now. We've had uh, yeah, but they, I probably say very few of uh, any photographs at all of uh, of them together in the same area. But we have a lot of photographs of annuals, and so that's one of the reasons why to we got to catch those in cicada safari. We can approve a photograph as an annual cicada or a periodical cicada. And so we are, we're generating maps of those, although it's not our main focus, uh, but people love cicadas. So we, we have uh, people reporting cicadas out throughout the year. We've had reports from several countries, South Africa, Thailand, Australia, uh, of cicadas uh, coming out of those areas. But we really focus this, this big number on the periodical. 